welcome everybody to the business telling talk and most of all welcome to Nico Ribnik my close friend uh, and ex colleague from Procter and Gamble uh, and today very successful entrepreneur is based in uh, Munich right Nico yes yes beautiful bavaria a beautiful bavaria exactly so Nico we're very glad to have you here today um you have a, a very successful story to be shared uh, with some uh, outstanding news uh, that if I understood correctly happened a few days ago and if you want to share with us uh, this uh, this great news later on but let's go you know step by step let's start with uh, we've done a workshop together I remember a few months ago in February and the reason why I invite you here today is because I find uh, really the way you start your business and the way you build up to achieve such a great success that that, that you reach today it's a kind of a pretty unique story. So would you be you know, open to share how you started, uh, what really triggered your interest uh, uh, into this business uh, and why you're here today? Yeah, I mean, thank, thanks a lot, Antonio. Um, a real pleasure to, to talk about this all because I think I never told anyone the whole story from Amsterdam. Nice. Yeah, because the, the roots of the story are definitely um, far, far back in time. Um, I mean, from my first internship to uh, yeah, my first real job, um, I mean, it was always in consumer brands, yeah, FMCG. I mean, as you said, we worked together with uh, Procter & Gamble. And since then, or back then, and, but also since then, I fell in la love uh, with telling, compelling, convincing stories to consumers. <laughs> That then can be measured in uh, in revenue um, or the price they're willing to pay, i.e., the brand. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I definitely fell in love with this. Um, I like uh, doing this uh, kind of business, um, but at the same time, uh, specifically with um, during my time with PMG, I mean, could also feel the limitations that you have to telling your own story or all the things that you actually want to tell about a certain product and brand if you work with brands that have already been existing for decades. Uh, or even with a big equity, established equity, you cannot really touch so much, right? Yeah. I don't know, I've got a guy that's uh, in Pampers that's uh, kept like a holy grail. And I mean, that's where you're the most junior person, you cannot do anything. Uh? Yeah. Um, but you could see and definitely see in a company like PNG what could be achieved, what could be attained if you manage to tell powerful brand or stories around powerful and uh, uh, beneficiary uh, products, um, what could be achieved. Yeah, so I was looking for something else um, over time um, and then completely changed everything what I did back then. Um, so from one day to another, um, I quit with PNG, I mean, back then uh, on Pringles, where we've been together, um, and moved to Asia and actually tiptoed into my entrepreneurial experience in online business, e-commerce, uh, consulting. So I tried out many, many things on the other side of the world. Um, and I really um, enjoyed being dependent only on me back then, to really tiptoe into this entrepreneurial life and to tell my own stories. And yeah, with the brands I started uh, to build, I started to sell, uh, some failed, uh, actually many failed, some were successful, but most failed, but it was definitely yeah. a lot of love. Um, and how life plays, um, I found myself after about five years uh, back in Europe um, due to a, to a variety of reasons. Um, and I tried to find a way back into actually yeah, selling compelling consumer goods by leveraging uh, brands. Yeah? Um, but given my experience in online business and e-commerce, um, I realized also that actually the brand, how we learned in the PNG, was a little bit decommodized. Huh? Because originally, um, as we learned, the brand is, is more or less the, the thing that unleashes demand in a user or a consumer for a certain product um, versus another one. Right? Because it's in the 100% power of the consumer to choose in front of a shelf you take product A or B. And that's why consumer is boss, right? Exactly. And somehow this all kind of shifted away. Yeah, this power to the e-commerce platforms. Yeah, 
that more or less decided what product to put it, put in front of you. Yeah? And independent of your maybe your own ambitions um, as a customer, um, they put the product in front of you where they feel, which makes totally sense, of course, they can achieve the greatest scale. Yeah? So a little bit the brand, how we, we knew it or how we learned um, yeah. in, in, the, in the late 2000s, 2010s, kinder. Um, was not anymore as as relevant um, as, as it used to. Um, so I was looking for a way to, uh, or I was looking for a right to win for consumer brands in online business, in tech. Yeah? So how, I mean, what kind of role can a brand play? And um, what I then, I mean, it was a very insightful conversation I had when I came back to Germany uh, with a pharmacist, a friend of mine, um, who owns a, or he inherited a couple of pharmacists uh, in Hamburg. Um, and he once told me when we were sitting over a beer in the beer garden, um, yeah, that he finds it so funny that whenever men enter a pharmacy, they completely behave diff very, very different from women when they enter a pharmacy. So men in general, no matter what is the topic, even if it's a not so shameful topic, they're always, their voice always comes a little bit lower. Huh? Okay. Often they look left, right before they approach the counter. Huh? If somebody can listen. And you would think that they all maybe have a, a very shameful problem, right? Maybe an erectile dysfunction or hemorrhoids, where we would all agree that it's maybe not a topic you just uh, talk about <laughs> when you sit with friends. Yeah, um, of course. But even with very common topics like a herpes or an athlete's foot or um, a weird rash on your arm, they kind of feel uncomfortable talking about. It. So there must be, there's a very strong emotional barriers with men about the health. Uh, so they cannot so easily and freely talk about their health, which apparently often prevents men from actually looking for the cure they need for certain everyday health problems. Uh, so you're um, kind of saying that the shame to ask for a solution, it was a kind of barrier for them to really find the solution they were looking for, right? Absolutely. I think it, it, it is uh, probably one of the most prevailing uh, barriers. But the insight I got in this conversation back then was it's not only for obviously shameful topics like an erectile dysfunction. It can yeah. even be for common topics where a woman would never have a problem to talk about, like a rash or maybe hair thinning yeah, or, or hair loss. Okay. And that men kind of feel uncomfortable um, addressing the topic. Um, that's how it all started. Um, but that's sort of what it's more uh, in a bit. No, I mean, that's... Uh... Really, I mean, we, we say in, in business telling that you should always start listening to the audience. Uh, and what you share with us is really, you add this insight talking with, uh, uh, you know, the audience that could be, that, that could be a potential audience of your business, uh, audience in terms of uh, business partners like the pharmacist, et cetera. But still, I mean, it all came uh, with, a, with a talk uh, with a potential audience. So one more time, you know, when you really, unleash the full power of the insight that you can have listening to them. You really have a treasure where you can sit on and it is uh, very powerful. So, I mean, how did you, uh, how did you turn this, uh, let's say, powerful insight uh, into a business idea? Then today it came, uh, it came along to become quite successful, but we're going to share more about the success uh, later on. But really, I'm curious to understand how this insight uh, turned around into an idea. What have you done? Yeah, and that's um, because I was looking for kind of right to win um, of brands in, in the online world, in online business. Uh, yeah. And once you have a barrier, I think that goes back to all what we learned, right? Um, if you actually have demand for a product yeah, or for a solution, right? Um, but you have a barrier, then brands can often be a very effective way to overcome this barrier and build a bridge yeah. between the product. Um, and the demand and, and the customer. And shame is a very strong barrier that a brand can address, right? Because a brand can uh, destigmatize a topic, a brand can build a relationship, yeah? an intimate relationship where you don't feel that somebody else is actually um, listening or is, is having access to this relationship. Um, so I definitely saw, I mean, with this problem that men have a problem to talk about their health, and to address certain early health topics, brand has a right to win, yeah? to, to, to address the demand audience. At the same time, um, tech, digital, a digital path to purchase had also a right to win here in combination with the brand because the technological progress 
um, we're talking here about uh, early 2018, uh, late 2017, already allowed us yeah, um, to actually have a doctor's visit, to have a pharmacy visit in a 100% digital way. Yeah, so that you actually could talk to a doctor um, even without seeing a doctor, without visiting yeah, a of doctor. Course. You could of course. obtain the solution like a medication, um, a pharmaceutical product, without going to a pharmacy and talking to a, um, a female staff behind the counter. Yeah? So this was the more or less what I was exactly looking for, like to find um, an, an, a business idea where both brand and tech have both an equally a right to win and if you combine it you can actually unleash a great market so the yeah. idea was born in 2018 actually that we want to build a digital direct to consumer brand around health topics for men yeah, that men have but don't address because they face certain emotional barriers like shame stigma and many others um, that follow them that have to yeah, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, you, you, were, you were able to connect together technology, you were able to connect together demand from the, from the audience, from the potential audience, because at that time it was not existing yet. And you were able also to collect together a few other, you know, business players around this industry. So it really, it really sounds like you came in the right moment. Uh, for the right project, uh, uh, talking to the right people, right? The, the, the answer to the why now, you know, that, that sometimes we, we wonder ourselves is why my idea now should be relevant. It really sounds you find the right timing. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, and, and you couldn't be more right because it was definitely, I mean, there's so much luck, I think, in, 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 in the story and, and, and it was definitely a lucky moment. Yeah, uh, that we had because so many things came together. So the why now was definitely, I mean, uh, embodied here. Um, it was not only like having the right idea, but it was definitely also um, actually having the right inspiration because at the yeah. same time, um, there were two companies in the US, um, um, For Hims and, and Roman, that actually launched similar business models in the US. Yeah, there was prescriptive drugs, however. Why, however? Because, I mean, we tried or our idea, and as we do it today, and was launching a model like this in continental Europe, specifically in Germany, which is one of the um, strictest regulated healthcare markets in the world. So for us, initially, prescriptive drugs didn't play any role in this idea. Of course. Because we said, oh, it's, it's too hot, right? We cannot really yeah. offer which will only pass to purchase for prescriptive drugs. At the same time, in Germany, you cannot even talk, you cannot advertise in any way um, prescriptive drugs. Uh, so we actually started with the idea of building an OTC, so over-the-counter um, um, brand yeah, for OTC products, um, similar maybe to a L'Oreal Men's Expert or Nivea Nivea for Men, right? But for products, um, that address shameful health topics like hemorrhoids, helpers, etc. Yeah? However, this initial idea with the OTC products didn't really resonate well with, 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 with investors back then because they said, hey, the, the order baskets are too small. I mean, like a herpes cream costs five euros with a brand premium, you come to seven euros fifty. Your customer acquisition cost is around 40 euros, probably the first estimation. So you, I mean, you can uh, calculate yourself, I mean, uh, how many reorders you need to become profitable your marketing and quite a lot <laughs> exactly yeah. and that's usually i mean that's when venture capital investors usually yeah turn up up. great idea but uh, let's look at something else and this was the great i mean the coincidence and, and and the great moment for us that those two american companies they showed if you do this for prescriptive drugs i mean you can take so many boxes at the same time because besides taking the shame element out with a nice brand and digital only platform you also offer huge convenience to, to your customers, right? Because the path to purchase for prescriptive drugs, especially in a country like Germany in the US as well, but in Germany even more, is very complicated. You first have to go to a general practitioner, to a GP. The GP makes diagnosis says, okay, now you have to go to the specialist. Then you have to go to a specialized doctor. Uh, I mean, if there's something available, um, or if it's something not available, then it's actually appointments in the calendar of a specialized doctor. You have to wait a couple of weeks before you can see them. Then it gets you the prescription. If you take the prescription, you have to go to the pharmacy. 
there, I mean, as a man with an erectile dysfunction, maybe you have to put the prescription in front of um, uh, attractive young women, since 80% of uh, the staff in German pharmacies are women between the age of uh, 25 and 38. And there are so many moments of shame. You have so much complexity in there. So by looking at those American models that offer the same thing for prescriptive drugs, we say, hey, we can tick a, a third box. Yeah? We talk to venture capital investors that, yes, we love it. Order baskets are great. The, the, the problem you solve is so compelling that probably the recurring rates, the retention rates you can achieve behind this by offering this simplified um, path to prescriptive treatments for health topics that men don't address because they don't dare talk about it, yeah? um, is so strong that you can achieve great retention rates. Okay, let's do it together. Yeah, and this then led to one another and we then started uh, with some great investors on board and the whole company um, in late 2018, early 19. Fantastic. And so today, what does the company offer? What's, what's the business, the value proposition out there? It's a, it's a technological platform, am I right? Where user can buy, I mean, you, you are the best one to explain it. Tell us what, what do you sell? Um, I mean, I, let, let me do like this. I mean, after our workshop, right? Because uh, um, probably one year ago, I would have told you a half an hour story right now of what we do. Actually, what we do right now is we give people access to effective medical treatments who otherwise do not have access and therefore compromise in their everyday health, life, um, and quality because they don't solve the problems. That's what we do. We started with men's health yeah, because there was shame, was the barrier we had to overcome. Yeah. So many men compromised in their sexual life because they didn't cure their erectile dysfunction, they didn't cure their pre-made education, they didn't cure their testosterone insufficiency and rather compromise in their sexual life and their relationships rather than actually seeing a doctor and doing something against it. And we solved this with this initial idea by building a men's health platform that gives access to effective treatment in an easy and um, convenient way. Yeah, but trustworthy and serious way because it's real doctors that look at you, that make a diagnosis, and they prescribe um, original medications. And we do this in a D2C brand experience. So we started with this, but then we learned there's many other target groups out there yeah, that maybe um, um, have, maybe there it's not shame that prevents them yeah, um, from accessing the, the medical treatment. But we, our solution is equally relevant to them. Yeah? So we then started, the second thing what we launched is a, is a hair loss and skincare platform for men. Yeah? Because we realized that for many um, problems in their lifestyle um, um, health, yeah? like hair loss, genetically caused hair loss, like uh, um, serious acne, I mean, they just often don't know that there are medical solutions against this. I mean, they grew up with advertising and commercials telling them they can take some coffee and shampoo put in your hair and then you pray every night and then maybe it gets better. But nobody really knows that, that you could see a doctor yeah, to treat your genetic health, yeah, to give you recommendations, give you personalized solutions that could be unrestricted. So non-medical, if it's relevant for you, but they could also be medical. Yeah? So, and, and there the barrier we had to overcome was not shame, it was lack of knowledge, lack of education. Was education gap we closed? Then the third platform we launched was mental health. Yeah, so we we help all people, men and women, yeah, to overcome and uh, to treat um, everyday mental health issues, starting with stress, going to burnout, and uh, and and into other areas. Here we have a medical test platform um, that um, gives you convenient access to in-home medical tests. Yeah. And here you have, again, you have shame like there, like for sexually transmitted um, infections, but also um, others like convenience, like your um, colon cancer precaution test. Everybody should do, but come on, who, who takes time out of the schedule if you're serious and goes uh, to a doctor, takes a probe of your stool, and then uh, and, and, and does this every year as, as you should do, right? So we have also convenience or inconvenience as a barrier we have to overcome. 
So we now learn for our, us that actually the one thing that we actually help solving is helping people overcome barriers to effective healthcare. Uh, and those yeah. barriers we overcome with digital only healthcare brands. Yeah. You know, it's uh, there's also one of the reasons why we, we invite you here today. It's um, when we run the workshop, when we've done the workshop together at the beginning of February, where we try to simplify, you know, the, the, the whole business proposition, uh, and you summarize it very well um, today. I remember that when you and, and, and your co-founder were explaining me the complexity of your business, it was like you took like three hours because there were so many stakeholders, uh, variables on the table, key audience to talk to, talk to and, uh, and so many layers of complexity. And, and I remember that it took us a while, you know, a couple of days to really distill this complexity and to nail down what is really the game changer. So I'm asking you how, how powerful it is um, uh, to speed up the business, remove this complexity. I remember that at the beginning of the workshop, you say, sometimes I wonder, you know, where is exactly our focus? Because we have to take care about so many elements. Huh? And uh, I don't know if we can narrow down to one key element. And then what, what you said um, before, that is the outcome of the workshop we have done, it sounds to me it was really, um, let's say, a, a booster for your business uh, because you have single-minded, uh, you can talk in a more clear and more effective way to your audience what you do and then all the how you do it uh, comes along together. But they're not like, you know, a, a, ro a roadblock for you to share what you're doing. It's more a reason to believe that you are doing the right way. But having now this clarity on the purpose, this clarity on what you do, uh, it sounds to me it's uh, helping the business a lot. Am I right? Absolutely. And I think, um, and that's the interesting thing for me. Um, what I also didn't know actually uh, before, before January is actually that it can help you on so many different levels, right? It's not only, uh, I mean, the way how it helps you being more clear um, about your investment proposition, yeah, yeah. To, to investors about the purpose actually that you as a company want to convey and build and um, with your team so in your day-to-day -day interaction with your team yeah, and actually huddling everybody uh, behind a common purpose um, how it helps you communicating to users in the end in marketing yeah? and that actually can bring everything down to one denominator if you have this one very clear um, storyline that you want to tell as a company um, and with the broad brands that you actually build and launch into market. Uh, and of course, with other stakeholders, like the doctors, the pharmacists, and all our partners right now. I mean, maybe before we go into detail, I mean, uh, I mean how we actually unleash um, the power yeah. or how we uh, found this clarity, I think um, what everybody needs to understand is um, from the beginning of the story, when we had this idea um, to build this direct-to-consumer men's health platform, uh, um, for prescriptive drugs. In, in the American market, I mean, where we saw our role models back then, it was a lot, it was a completely different ball game than in a market like Germany, because they have different advertising laws, they have different regulation than we have here. So we had to be a lot more creative in our, um, yeah, I mean, back end setup, so in our operational setup, um, how we build our supply chain, how we build our group structure, right? So we are essentially not only one company. We currently, I think, have eight entities that are split over Europe due to many different reasons. Um, so we have to be a lot more creative how we build relationships with doctors, with pharmacists, with pharmaceutical companies than the Americans had to be um, to actually offer this front-end experience of easy access to effective healthcare. But this back-end creativity turned immediately into complexity yeah, because it's so, so complex of what we actually do in our everyday working in the office to offer this easy access in the front end. So we really, as a company, as a team, got completely lost in this complexity, right? So in our minds, it was very complex what we did. Yeah? And we completely forgot that actually what we offer, the solution that we're trying to set up there, is actually very simple. It's very easy. <laughs> yeah? And this complexity was exactly this roadblock we had. Yes, we were. We launched actually um, our first platform, uh, GoSpring. We launched it in May 2019, and immediately we're super successful. But yeah. suddenly it stalled. Yeah, whenever we tried to do something else, it was not as successful. It stalled. Uh, 
all the conversations we had with our stakeholders a little bit stopped, right? Because as you said, the first question, first time you asked what we actually do, we, we, I think we gave you a one hour speech. Huh? And that was a little bit what we yeah. did. Right? We completely lost actually like visibility on what we actually solve yeah? and what we actually offer by explaining how we do it. Yeah? And that was a, a very um, a main big issue that we didn't realize. And that definitely was uh, a roadblock uh, to, to the growth. And let's say to the growth potential because we were still quite successful, but it didn't unleash the whole potential on many different levels. Yeah. And then the realization was actually, it can all be so easy. I don't know if you want to go there already, but uh, that's my, my tagline. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. No, it's um, it's really, I mean, from, from your wording, we can really understand that when you remove complexity and you unleash the power of your idea, you can really, you know, uh, unlock uh, new audiences, uh, new business opportunities. You can remove challenges. You can turn challenges into opportunities. So it really sounds like, you know, this complex that you had at the beginning was really the break that didn't help you to speed up, to really change gear and, and go faster. And uh, so once you remove this complexity, uh, now apparently the, the business start to, you know, to pick up, uh, it was really successful, but really to touch the sky. And if I am right, uh, uh, you have uh, great news to be shared uh, in these days. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, we just closed a very successful uh, funding round. Uh, so we're talking here, I think in Germany, it's the third largest digital health round that was ever closed. Um, wow, the third really, largest. Yes, in digital health. Fantastic. Um, we have now um, a great um, foundation that we can actually roll out yeah, in, into other markets in, in, in Europe. We can address new target groups that we haven't addressed so far. We can think about vertical integration to really build an ecosystem around this very single-minded idea of offering easy access or effortless access, as we call it, offering effortless access to effective healthcare. Yeah? And we really can, like, uh, a buff or, or, or based on this um, a very simple line yeah, that actually says everything, we can build a great ecosystem right now. We have a chance to do this right now. And that's a really great success um, um, for a team, for us. Uh, and you can definitely say when it comes to the funding round and also to the team uh, that actually had to build this business up, up here um, to tell the story, everybody, of what we do or what you do every day when you come here to the office, actually offering effortless access um, to effective healthcare to people who otherwise would not have any yeah, access. Of course. Yeah? I mean, this was so powerful because it helped unleash I think the power in the team, the power in the business, and subsequently also the power that we could convey to the investors. Uh -huh. And this was definitely, I mean, largely driven by this decomplication yeah, that happened by finding our single mind storyline. Fantastic. So, I mean, Nico, we have a few minutes left. If you can kind of uh, highlight uh, three key words, uh, three key concepts, uh, uh, the one that we, we talk about, or even other one, that for you are really has been the real game changer uh, to make uh, an idea that was born in 2018, uh, a company today uh, received the third largest in the digital health tech business, uh, the third largest investment in Germany. So we're talking about, you know, a very successful story. Um, what would you highlight? I mean, for us, and I think there was definitely in, 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 the, in the conversation, if you recall, um, it was, I think, a question, if I recall it rightly from you, was, hey, all the pain you went through in the two years, in the last two years, I mean, yeah. this session here is not enough to tell, actually, uh, all the things that went wrong in the last two years that we learned from. Yeah? Um, because there were many, many uh, tough times um, and definitely will be in the future again, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it's always a roller coaster. But it was this one question Hey, Manuel, my co founder, Nico, what if this would happen is the best thing that ever happened to you? Yeah? Because this makes you unique, this gives you the experience that only you have 
and gives you the stories that only you can tell. Uh, and I think it was a great realization and it was a definitely um, a very um, 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 significant uh, um, starting point or realization for a hard moment and then starting point for us to tell the story of what we actually do. Because this starting point, only we, as, 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 as us, as the founders, as the company, as the business team, we can tell and start the story from here. Yeah. And this already makes us unique in, in, in the audience's minds. Of course. Yeah? But this, I would say, was uh, the first point um, that helped us getting there. Um, the second point is actually a logical consequence, because if you know the starting point, and if you know, I would say, the first uh, 20% um, of your storyline, so like how you start telling the story, then somehow the next 20% and the second next uh, 20% come automatically, right? Yeah. So it helps you to kind of build a single-minded uh, storyline around the red thread. Uh, and we could really start telling of what we do without the side noise, without the explanations why we do it. Yeah, of course. Smaller points, because we started with a big why in the beginning. Yeah, and this gave everything else. So then it helped us to say a very single-minded story. And we relieved ourselves from the pressure that we need to tell all the facets of the story because we only have one storyline we need to tell. So the single-mindedness yeah, and really the discipline in the single-mindedness. And then the third thing, and that's a little bit, um, I don't know if this applies to everybody. Yeah, maybe many uh, know it about themselves, others probably not. Um, because not everybody's as lazy as I am, for example, <laughs> um, is when it comes to the application of existing models or tools. Uh, why am I saying this is laziness? Because I remember from in university, in business life, you know, always people come up, ah, use this tool, this model, the five C's, uh, matrix, A, B, C, D, the B, yeah. C, G matrix, whatever, yeah, whatever you do, use this tool or this, this, this model. You say, yeah, it makes sense. Totally sense, but when you're actually in everyday business, at least for me, I never really applied them, yeah, right? Yeah. Because you had a lot of pressure, a lot of things to do, never had the time to really um, um, apply a theoretical or academic uh, business model to something. But what we learned, and um, I think with the workshop with you, was definitely recalling and, and giving us a tool in the hand. Yeah, but what I learned is, I mean, communication is is. It's not an, I mean, it's an art to amplify it, but it's definitely a science and it's a rhythm. Yeah? I mean, communication exists since humankind uh, exists even before that. <laughs> um, um, and there definitely are certain proof points that are validated on how to communicate effectively. And if you are very disciplined to recall those proof points and maybe use a model or a tool to apply to a storyline that you already have kind of um, identified for yourself really helps turning a great storyline into an effective storyline. And this discipline right now, we really try, we really implemented it even into the DNA of our company culture right now, yeah? that we apply certain rules of communication in the way how we pitch each other ideas, yeah. how we pitch marketing concepts, how even Manuel and me um, talk to each other, um, argue with each other in a, in a more structured and effective way, the way how we framed our, um, our company, etc. cetera. Um, so this really is only then down to discipline discipline in application because the tools exist anyway. So those are, the, I would say, the three uh, uh, and, and, and key points that helped us uh, getting to the story that we tell right now. Nico, really, I mean, uh, really, thanks a lot. Uh, these 30 minutes uh, have flown away so fast. Uh, I would stay here, you know, to talk with you for other 30 minutes, but unfortunately, the size we kept are 30 minutes. So definitely, we're going to have another talk because we want to, you know, be updated on the further success of your venture. Uh, congratulations for uh, the, the funds that you closed uh, in these days. Uh, very well done. Uh, I know you, I know your team, uh, and you guys are doing a great job. Uh, and I really feel one of the key secrets you have, you really believe on your purpose. You know, you became believer on your story so much, then you feel kind of you have a mission, uh, as you said very well. Uh, and this mission would help the world. So I think that you have a double, you know, double booster 
uh, on top of the financial numbers, uh, also, you know, the purpose that you are pursuing. So well done. Uh, thanks again, and uh, looking forward to hear from you. And I think the whole audience uh, would be very happy to have uh, good, good news from you in the near future. Thank you thanks again. Ciao, Nico. Thanks. Ciao.